Good morning to all. Uh, today we will talk a little about anomalies of the urinary tract and reproductive system. My name is Dmitry Alexeyevich Kuznetsov and I will show you what we have in this topic. Uh, this topic uh, contains uh, the subtopics like anomalies of the renal vessels, kidney anomalies, ureteral anomalies, bladder anomalies, anomalies of the urethra and male genital anomalies. So let's talk a little about anomalies of the renal vessels. It includes uh, such anomalies like anomalies of the number and position of renal vessels, for example, accessory renal artery, double renal artery, multiply arteries. Uh, abnormalities of the shape and structure of the arterial trunks like uh, renal artery aneurysm, fibromuscular stenosis of the renal arteries, uh, arteriovenosal fistulas and renal vein anomalies uh, such as right vein anomalies and left vein, uh, renal vein anomalies. And uh, we will talk a little about uh, all these anomalies in more detail information. Uh, as we see, the accessory artery on the angiogram, which, we, uh, which I show to you on the X-ray examination with contrasting of the arterias. Uh, so accessory vessels are found in the 17 uh, up to the 20% of the cases, which go to the lower pole of the kidney accompanying the corresponding artery, cross with the ureter, thereby causing a violation of the outflow of urine from the kidney and the development of the hydronephrosis. Uh, this situation may cause uh, such disease as primary hydronephrosis. We have three stages of the primary hydronephrosis. As you can see, the uh, normal kidney with uh, normal pelvis and calyces of the kidney. Uh, the vessel which cross the ureter can uh, uh, mm, can make the stenosis of the ureter uh, in the pelvic ureteral segment and cause the uh, pyeloectasia and uh, calicaectasia and uh, the decreasing of the parenchyma tissue uh, amount. So, uh, first one, first stage is uh, the formation of the pyeloectasia or enlargement of the renal pelvis. The second degree uh, means the situation with the transformation uh, with forming of the pila calica ectasia or enlargement of the calyxes and renal pelvis uh, without uh, loss of the kidney function. And the third stage is the presence of the pila uh, calica ectasia as well as uh, thickening of the renal parenchyma and uh, decreasing of the function of the kidney. And we also have the Fourth stage, it is the terminal hydronephrosis with the unfunctioning kidney and uh, hydronephrotic transformation of all kidney. Uh, let's see up uh, how it looks like on the during the investigation of the patient. Uh, the left image show us the ureteral uh, excretory urography, uh, which show us the narrowing of the ureteral pelvic segment as formed uh, and forming of the hydronephrosis. Here we have the hydronephrosis, and uh, here we have the narrowing of the pelvic ureteric segment. Uh, the right image show us the Computer, uh, it is the computer tomography with angiography re regimen of the renal vessels, which identifies an additional inferior pole artery causing the hydronephrotic transformation. Here we have ar uh, lower arterial pole artery and hydronephrosis uh, of the right kidney. So, uh, how it looks like uh, in the investigation? Let's see up what we have more. Uh, this is uh, the surgical treatment of uh, this uh, pathology. As you can see, we uh, are conducted the uh, such a surgical treatment like plasty of the pelvic ureteral segment. What is it? It is surgical treatment which includes the plastic surgery of the pelvic ureteric segment, uh, the stage of which is in uh, excision of the stenotic zone with uh, repositioning of the artery behind the kidney and formation of the anastomosis. The most frequently performed technique uh, by Heinz Anders, pelvic ureteric segment plasty. So let's see uh, how it looks like the laparoscopic plastic surgery of the pelvic ureteral segment of the kidney. As you can see on the video, we have the uh, enlarged pelvis with the transformation hydronephrotic and the vessel. Uh, for first one, we uh, 
make the sutures on the pelvis uh, to help uh, us uh, to rotate the uh, pelvis. And also we have made the clamp on the vessel uh, which help us to reposit it also. Then we rotate the kidney and then reject the part of the pelvis. After that we take out the stand, it is white tube, uh, which helps us to make the good uh, urine outflow uh, from the kidney to the lower urinary tract after operation. And then we uh, make the reposition of the ureter in front of the uh, accessory vessel. After that we circularly reject the uh, hydronephrotic uh, transformed uh, part of the pelvis, remove this part, Then we uh, dissect the ureter longitudinally uh, to make the better uh, side of the uh, plasty of the ureter to the resected pelvis. And circularly uh, make the sutures around all this pelvis. There is the last part of the plastic, and then we will see how it looks like uh, near the normal kidney. By the way, stent is removed after three months, uh, more uh, usually, uh, because uh, we need to heal the area of the plastic and it also helps us to make the improvement of the good urine outflow. Here you can see the normal kidney and the kidney after plasty. There is also exist uh, such anomaly like doubling of the renal arteries. You can see on the uh, angiography x-ray uh, here is uh, doubling and here is doubling. So uh, also we can see the more rare uh, anomaly like uh, multiply arteries. As you can see such uh, big amounts of the arteries from the left kidney and also the same situation from the right kidney. Aneurysm of the renal artery. So uh, aneurysm is uh, the Dilation of the renal artery, such as aneurysm, is uh, twice the diameter of the normal renal artery. They are usually detected by the chance. A renal artery aneurysm is the different from the pseudoaneurysm uh, of the same artery. It can, be, it can occur at different sites along the renal artery and it can be located within the parenchyma. Uh, literature on the disease is uh, scarce and there are no studies on the evaluation and treatment regime. Uh, etiologically, most renal artery aneurysm are not associated with a definite cause. Uh, they are idiopathic, uh, which means the cause is not known. However, uh, there are several painful conditions that may be associated with the formation of the disease. Uh, fibromuscular dysplasia can obviously cause uh, such an aneurysm. Trauma can lead to damage the, uh, to the vascular wall and the formation of the aneurysm infection affecting the blood vessel wall, including uh, Staphylococcus aureus, syphilis, and mycotic infection are also 
risk uh, factors. Aneurysms within unchanged renal parenchyma can occur due to mycobacterium tuberculosis and nodular periarteritis. The symptoms are most of all symptom, asymptomatic. In the fact, uh, most are discovered by chance. Uh, symptoms may include flank pain, hypertension, distal renal embolization with reduced renal function, infarction, rupture, and bleeding. Uh, uh, the hematuria may be a sign of the intraparenchymal damage. The treatment uh, it's, uh, uh, depends on the condition, and it should be monitored and taken uh, prophylactically or treatment with the surgery. Uh, it is not really known when the treatment should be started. It is generally accepted uh, that the treatment should be started when the enlargement exceeds 2 cm in size. Uh, surgical treatment includes uh, angioplasty or bypass surgery. In the complicated cases, nephrectomy is also used. Fibromuscular stenosis. Uh, the fibromuscular stenosis it is the stenosis uh, of the area of the uh, renal vessel. So we can see the unilateral and bilateral fibromuscular stenosis. Uh, the diagnostics of the renal artery fibromuscular stenosis is uh, renal uh, radioisotope examination, renal angiography as you can see, uh, the excretory urography, uh, uh, which can make us the great importance of the investigation of such patients. The renin-dependent nature of the arterial hypertension, uh, it is uh, the most frequent symptom of the fibromuscular stenosis, uh, is checked by the captopril test. Uh, the treatment of the renal artery fibromuscular stenosis is surgical. If it is contraindicated, uh, the balloon dilatation of the stenosis is also used in this uh, anomaly. Uh, the renal arteriovenous malformation, or AVM, is a relatively r rare malformation, accounting uh, for up to the 1% of all AVMs. A distinction uh, is made between uh, congenital and acute, uh, traumatic and out-traumatic renal AVMs, uh, which can cause massive hematuria, uh, pain, uh, retroperitoneal hemorrhage, and uh, heart failure. Uh, Non-invasive uh, modalities such as ultrasound or uh, multispiral CT scan or MRI are widely used uh, to diagnose uh, this pathology, but angiography remains the gold standard for diagnosing of the renal AVMs. The advantage of the angiography over the other methods is the possibility of the simultaneous uh, treatment of such patients. Treatment of renal AVMs may include endovascular dis dissection of the arteriovenous fistula or open surgical intervention, including ex vivo techniques. Uh, the choice of the treatment method is based on the general condition of the patient and the characteristic of the renal AVM.